Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And guys, I'm in paradise as usual over here in uh, Cape Coral, Florida. Beautiful day out here. It's about 65 degrees. The chickens are eating in the back there. I'll show you them in a little bit. And I'm going into the snake room not knowing what I'm gonna find because you know what? We've been getting eggs on the ground. So we might be having some more eggs and that's gonna be a fun thing, of course. So let's uh, take a look into the snake room. Maybe we'll go to the fish pond first. Take a look at what's going on over there, and then, you know, you never know. You never know what you're gonna find. Hope you guys have a great day. Let's take a look. It's a beautiful Monday morning, and the chickens are out, and the rooster, too. Here they come. They're eating their food. They're eating their breakfast. These are not even my chickens, but they're my adopted chickens. They're next door's chickens. <laughs> look, that's a big rooster, huh? Oh, he lets us know every morning, believe me. There's my favorite, the little white puffy guy over there. Right? What's up? You guys are being very social today. That's my little, that's my little, uh, leucistic, uh, <laughs> chicken. <laughs> There's our melanistic chickens, for those of you who want to keep this more along the lines of reptiles. Have fun, guys. I gotta go do some work. I just got a call from Kirsten, who works in my snake room, and she's like, we got two clutches of eggs on the ground. So I'm running down here. I just got to the snake room. I was upstairs working and it's time to pull some clutches and see what we got. These are the first ball python clutches of the year. As you know, I had a surprise cl carpet clutch a little earlier uh, in February, but this is the first ball pythons. I know they're gonna be coming fast and, and furiously over the next couple of weeks. So let's check out what we got. All right, I got, I got the text message from Kirsten. Who clean, helps clean here, and she said, we have eggs, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and we had two two clutches of eggs, right? Yep. Two ball python clutches. Uh, the first one is a really interesting one, unfortunately. She's been the worst like breeder for me year after year after year. She's a 2016, this is her first clutch of eggs, and I see a lot of slugs in there. I see maybe two good eggs. This albino is actually um, het for VPI Xanthic too, and she's het for something called whitewash, which is an interesting gene over in Europe that causes uh, a paradoxing in the snake. So if you guys have ever seen a paradox snake, I'll show you a paradox snake for a second. Here's like a, a paradox um, banana pastel mandarin. See the black in there? That doesn't belong there. That's paradoxing. But supposedly the whitewash gene comes from Europe, and it's actually a genetically inherited paradoxing. Um, I had picked this up from someone, and I'd been trying to breed her for a couple of years, and she, I don't know if it was the male's fault or her fault. I'm blaming the male because she actually laid some eggs now, and there's a lot of infertile, so maybe the male and her just weren't getting along or grooving. But he's triple head, you know, in albino azanthic whitewash. So I kind of have to use him. So the first clutch sometimes from these snakes that breed late are usually not great clutches, and then hopefully the year after they, they get better, I'm hoping. She's sitting on another slug right there. I already checked, but so we'll pull these two eggs. We'll throw out the slugs, of course. We'll get her set up in a new uh, tub. And this is the first ball python clutch of the year. So it's pretty early. Uh, we're in early March, but I guess it's the, I, I told you that we were gonna start seeing some eggs on the ground. Usually this, the snakes that don't breed the year before will breed early the following year because they're kind of ready. Their follicles are bigger already. So anyway, she's a really nice snake, beautiful looking snake. The odds of obviously of hitting what I want, you know, is not great. Just getting the whitewash alone is gonna be one in four. We'll have 50% um, of the snakes will be albinos because she's 100%, well, she is an albino, and then the, um, the male is a hit. And then to hit the azanthic, it's gonna be another one in four. So, you know, to hit the whole shebang, which would be the snow whitewash, is gonna be really probably impossible with two eggs, but you never know. All right. Here she is, all cleaned up. She's gonna go into her new clean tub. We'll set her up and uh, she's, she's actually got some good weight still on her. She doesn't look like she's super skinny. So that I guess happens when you don't have a lot of fertile eggs. You know, <laughs> she didn't really put out that much nutrition for the big thick white eggs we need. So hopefully she'll be ready to get back into the breeding rotation again next year early. And uh, that's all we can hope for. All right, we got them set up, the two eggs that were good. The others were just slugs, and um, there was about five or six slugs. 
two of those, of the two that, I, that look good, one is actually a egg that has, at least to my knowledge, when I candled it, it had no uh, embryo or blood vessels in it. The ironic thing is that the one that looks with the dimple looked like the good egg, and the other one that looks like the good egg probably is a bad egg because it doesn't have anything in it. So I don't know. Who knows why these snakes don't take or why only you get one? You, you would think you'd get no fertiles. I mean, why you got one, I don't know. Could this one be the magical one that we hit on every single morph? It's possible. I've had it happen before. All right, here's our second clutch for the day. I love this, this girl. Super pastel, spider, pinstripe, fire. She's got it all. This was one of the first few, first gene, you know, multi-gene animals that were produced. This, she's a 2014. And she took a while to breed. She's just gorgeous. She's a really nice looking snake. She's almost white looking. She's albinoish looking because she's got so many genes that they have just wiped out the pattern. Uh, between the spider and the pin striping, and then of course the super pastel, which really lightened it, and the fire obviously that yellowed it out. Um, just nice looking pattern. And she laid a nice clutch of eggs here. This looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nice eggs. I haven't candled them, of course, but they look really good. And I bred her to an orange dream spider, vanilla cream head clown. So there's going to be 50% head clowns, which is really, we weren't really going for that. But obviously since she's fire, she throws fire. We're going to get a lot of super fires in this litter uh, and or vanilla creams. Because remember the uh, vanilla cream will, will throw either vanilla or fire, not both, but definitely one. And if she throws her fire, we're gonna get some cool stuff. So 50% of the stuff is gonna be really cool. And then we're gonna have a lot of other just interesting looking stuff in here as well. So obviously uh, the Orange Dream is gonna enhance that. I love Orange Dream mixed with Vanilla Cream. Looks really nice. And the Orange Dream Super Fires are really white. They kind of cleans it up a lot. So we'll see. There should be some nice uh, stuff that we can sell for pets and cool breeder projects. Let's pull these things. All right, she's nice and cleaned up. I had to bring her outside. It was a beautiful day out and I knew she would look great in the grass. So she's gonna wanna do some sleeping and just relaxing, but I wanted to just show her in the, in, in, in the natural habitat. <laughs> Once again, super pastel, fire, pinstripe, spider. One of my first purchases um, ever, multi-gene animal. I think I got this from Mike Wilbanks a bunch of years ago, over six years ago. She's only, this is only her second litter. She was, she took a while to breed, but really nice looking. Nice, nice looking girl. Interesting. Maybe a little, you know, for, for some people's, you know, purposes, maybe too, a lot of, uh, the pattern is almost too removed, but she's, she's kind of cool looking. So I like her. All right. This is a, looks like a nice clutch. Uh, they all have embryos and blood vessels, very plump eggs. Very healthy looking clutch of eggs. So the other one was not so great. This one was great. Obviously the other one has got more genetic potential than this one, but we're gonna produce some cool stuff from these, uh, these eggs for sure. We got eight good ones. We're gonna put them in the incubator. Uh, as you know, I do my egg boxes set up with my Tupperware. I have my cut up sponges on the bottom that are soaked in water. And then I have this little light diffuser that I cut the size. So the eggs are not touching the water, but there's tons of moisture underneath this. Then I'm going to put a little saran wrap, plastic wrap over the top here. Just put the put the top on so that seals it. Put them in the incubator, and I probably will never touch them until they hatch. I might vent them once or twice if there's too much water. Sometimes with these, this many eggs, and they start once they start breathing a little more, uh, you might get some a lot of you know condensation on the outside of the egg box or on the top of the egg box. I may have to change the saran wrap you know, toward the end before they hatch, but otherwise they're gonna just stay in that uh, incubator and hopefully we'll produce some nice cool stuff in 60 days. All right, it's exciting. The uh, the breeding season is here and uh, we got eggs on the ground. The first clutches will be hatching in April sometime. Uh, if we do the calculations properly, the first ball python clutches that happen today will be um, hatching the first week in May. So it's gonna start coming every week now. We're gonna be getting a lot of clutches. I, I, I bred a lot of ball pythons. Let's. Fingers crossed we get a lot of clutches, and then we have to figure out where we're going to put everything. <laughs> so you know how that goes. I hope you guys had a great week. I hope you have something great and peaceful and happy and fun planned for the weekend. Make sure you check that Jeremy Stone Part 2 um, video interview I put up 
this past week, or I'm going to be putting up if you uh, if this goes up first. I think that should go up first. It's a lot of great information on boas and boa breeding if you guys want to check that out and you're interested in boas. Or if you want to get into boas, it's a great way to kind of learn about, you know, how boas are different than ball pythons and what some of the tricks of the trade are. All right, you guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back Monday morning.